going on homies? It's your boy Stumped back from the OPTC video and in today's video we're taking a look at the units in the game that have a grand party ability, being a leader and a burst ability, putting them onto a tier list for you guys to rank the best grand party leader all the way down to the worst grand party leader. Now we're at a particular point in the game where we have over 50 characters that have grand party abilities. So hopefully this particular bit, this video will help you guys break down who to level up, who to prioritize and what units are the best to use when it comes to the grand party seasons. Now we are well into like grand party season 19 or something I believe now, uh, which is kind of crazy seeing as um, the game only comes out once a month, but every single month we do get a particular rule set. Now this does affect what teams work best for that particular month. However, a good leader will bring forth the really good teams, and these are debuffs and buffs effects. They won't really affect the very, very good leader. So I will take the rule set into consideration, but not individual rule sets. I will actually just look at a rule set and say, well, even if the rule set is against this unit, this unit works still so damn well. However, we're just going to sort of look at the units without rule sets and stuff like that, because it just makes it a little bit easier too. But... Like I said, we're going to break down all the units. I might forget stuff because I'm going to be doing this off the dome. And remember, we have about 50 units to go through. So um, some stuff might fall through the cracks. But if you enjoy this kind of stuff, make sure to belt the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Do all that good stuff for me. Let me know in the comment section below as well who you guys think is the best leader besides who I put at number one. If you get to the end of the video as well, make sure to belt the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Like I said, do all that good stuff. With that said, let's dive in and check out some grand party leaders. Okay, so before we dive into the actual leaders, I, I want to give you guys a bit of context on um, what teams I think are the best in Grand Party. Now, I've done particular videos on PvP teams and tier lists and um, meta teams and all that kind of stuff, but this in Grand Party, it's a little bit different. Obviously, because the leader skill has extra stats and because the rule set obviously does stuff as well, mainly the leader, the leader's like the big thing. Because the leader brings extra stats, it actually changes the way teams actually operate. And I, I know I've been talking a lot of shit on Free Spirit lately, but like Free Spirit, I do think is probably the best Grand Party team. With Grand Party 2, you can actually win on a timeout, which makes defensive teams a little bit more viable uh, and brings forth those really bulky options and slowing teams down and all that kind of stuff too. So Free Spirit for me is the number one team. Slash is a, a very close behind them with like a rule set and um, a very good leader. And a burst ability, like slashes can just go crazy. Strength is still absolutely exceptional as well. Strength is very, very good. Again, strength and slashes to me is kind of like this. Um, I, I'm a big fan of slashes, but look, if you guys say strength is better, then go for it. The reason I like strength slashes more is because you can throw slashes in the front before like bursts even come into to effect, where strength kind of relies a bit more on what a burst is doing for them. Um, then we got Psy Free Spirit. Specifically, the Psy Free Spirit team I do think is better than the regular Psy team. Uh, then we've got the Quick Driven Slasher team. One of the best teams in the game. However, in Grand Party, this is a prime example of that team not being as good in Grand Party than it is in, in regular PvP. Then we got Strikers. Strikers are still very, very nice with the regular Psy team, the regular Dex team. Then we've got the Quick Driven team. So like your Kainu and like Kaido based team. And then we've just basically got everything else down here, which is very leader dependent. Like powerhouse are very good if you're running like gear five strats and you want to use HP cuts. Um, shooters pretty much are only used under leaders that buff shooters. Same with cerebral, same with fighters. And then honestly, just regular quick and int teams, they, they really suck. Honestly, they're just they're just bad. Regular driven, I didn't even include here because regular driven is this. Um, or it might be something like this. Uh, if you guys want to like get real technical with it. Um, but as for, like, actual int, int for me, it's just, int, int's really bad. Like, int, int needs a lot of help. I feel like this is probably more justified. So, that's the tier list of, like, what is the best teams to run. And obviously, if a leader directly boosts these teams, giving them more stats, they're probably going to find a higher place on the tier list. So, let's take a quick look over here. I have the number one unit, number two unit, number three unit, and then four to ten. Then we have 11 to 20, 21 to 30. 31 to 40, 41 to 50, and then just bad. Like, if, it's, if you're below the 50, like, you just, you're bad. Like, it's fine. But I do want to give, like, a lot of separation here. And I do want to kind of go into some depth with some of these other leaders that people don't really use. Now, I do make it a mission to actually use a lot of other characters in the game. I, I've pretty much used everything in the game that has a leader ability. I, I've tried to, anyway. Um, so, again, I'm going to do this off the dome and just go off memory. But um, hopefully we can we can break this down. So 
Just starting it off, uh, we've got the Super Tandem Luffy and Kaido combination. Honestly, Kaido... Kaido's okay because he does buff strength. Um, that's his big upside. I'm going to put him around 30 to for, uh, 31 to 40. I will obviously chop and change things as we go. As for Luffy, I think Luffy's probably a little bit higher. Luffy's probably close to the 20th mark, if not 21 to 30. He boosts Fighter, Dex, and I believe he boosts either Free Spirit or Psy. Or maybe it's something weird and it's completely off the mark. But he can give cooldowns with his burst, which is actually very, very handy. Kaido does damage, I believe. Kaido, for me, is like, honestly, he's, he's not very good at all. Ace Yamato, Ace Yamato, they're not exceptional either. I think they boost Free Spirit and Striker characters. So, um, like, they can do stuff, but, like, they're not that great. As for, like, the waifus, the waifus, probably a little bit better than Kaido, in my opinion. Um, definitely not, like, super amazing, though. As for Uta, Uta's definitely not great. She's not a very good leader at all. Um, same with Shanks. Shanks isn't great either. I, I don't really know if they sit down this sort of back echelons. Uh, but as for that, like, they're, they're, they're pretty bad. This Luffy, he does Fighters and Psy. Psy's not terrible. Um, but I don't think he's... He's just not a good PvP character too. So if, like, the character's not good in PvP and you have to shoehorn them into a team, it does, like, drastically, um, affect their capabilities of actual gameplay. As for Uta, Uta's still bad. But, um, I still I think she's better than everything we've just spoken about. So I'm just thinking 20 to 30, 21 to 30 now. She was driven... Sai and Int. Um, again, Int bad, Driven's bad, but Sai's okay. Her burst was one of the better ones in the game initially on release, but nowadays it's just kind of fallen off. As for Kdad, Kdad's probably around this 11 to 20 mark. I don't think Kdad's as good as Luffy. Uh, boosts strength and slashes, which is great. And I think he does like, they do like Sai as well. But they only have their burst one time and it's, it's actually just, oh no, they have it twice, but you can only get it off once. Kdad's honestly still really, really shit to use. This Zoro, though, I think this Zoro is better than both Luffy and Kdad. Boost Dex, Slashes, um, and I want to say Free Spirit, but I think it's another color. Um, he does, like, single target damage that is um, goes through defense, so he's easy, easy to put on a Slasher team. And obviously, Slashes just work really, really well underneath him. This Big Mom is bad. You do not want to use this Big Mom. She's so, so bad. As for Roger, though, Roger, I'm going to put up here, 4 to 10. Uh, you guys remember the Roger meta, right? Like, Roger's... Whether using 6-star or 6-plus. Um, the ability to just give half stats to everyone and then have a slash team go, it's it's so, so powerful. It's still ridiculously powerful. It's just... The the difference between 1 and 4 is massive in Grand Party. It's, it's kind of nuts. As for Nami, Nami's honestly not bad. Um, she was Free Spirit, she was Striker, and she was Psy characters. Her burst isn't great, though. Um, I actually think she's better than this top music girl. I, I'm not even kidding. Um, the downside to Nami is, again, you have to shoe her, shoehorn her onto a team, and because of that, it drastically affects her capabilities. Robin, Robin's pretty bad. Um, Whitebeard, he's not great either. As for Rayleigh Gabon, Rayleigh Gabon are okay. They boost Free Spirit, Cerebral, and I believe one of their colors. I think it's Psy. Um, they're not that great, but look, I think they're just way, they're definitely way better than these characters. This Luffy, um, he's okay. He actually has a pretty good burst. I think he's probably better than these two. Um, uh, again, his classes kind of suck, though. He does fighter, quick, and I want to say it's strength. Um, the, the strength fighter part's really, really good, but, like, as for that, he, he's kind of bad. Uta, this Uta, honestly, is really good. Um, I love using this Uta. Her burst is exceptional. She gives, um, cooldown reduction to the enemy, and with, like, what we've seen with Smoothie and Cross Guild and, um, that type of team... This Uta's really, really good. Um, she boosts Int, Quick, and Cerebral. So she's not exactly giving buffs to the best teams. But her burst can be used three times. And you can just use it after 20 seconds. It's it's actually really, really good. Um, but again, you have to sort of shoehorn, shoehorn her into a team. Which makes her very, very hard to use. Ace is actually really, really good as well. Um, downside to Ace is that he boosts Shooters. And sh the Shooter team, it's good if you have literally all the pieces of the puzzle. And Ace is one of those pieces, so it's not like you have to find a home for him. But he also does Psy, which means that you can run like a Psy Free Spirit team, or you can just bring Free Spirit, and then just run Psy, and then run Ace. He works exceptional. Like, he's, he's a very, very good leader, um, and has a very, very good burst. I just, again, don't love the fact you have to run a shooter team. As for Kid Luffy, Kid Luffy's actually pretty good. Um, definitely better than Nami and um, Top Music, in my opinion. Um, he boosts Fighters, which kind of sucks, but then he does Dex and Psy. So you can do some really, really fun stuff there. I think he does Dex. Does he do Dex? I'm pretty sure he does Dex. 
I, I want to say he does dex. The problem is, I like, if you're going to use a Luffy, though, like, that Luffy is just way better. Um, and again, you have to run a fighter team, really, with this Luffy, because you have to, again, shoehorn him into a team. And that becomes a little bit of a problem. This Sabo... Sabo is probably the same echelons as Luffy is. Um, you know what? Shanks probably deserves to be up here as well. Um... I think I would rather run Shanks than, than Sabo. So let's do that. Um, and I think I would much rather use this Uto than all of them, to be honest. I think she does Psy, Int, Cerebral characters. And honestly, nowadays, I think that's probably better than this. I, I think her burst is just bad. Um, Sabo does Psy, Cerebral, and um, Quick, I believe. I might be wrong. Like I said, I'm, I'm just going off the dome here. Um, but... I think he gives haste. He's like a haste unit. Again, have to shoehorn the unit into a team. Not exactly a great option. Um, Killer, Killer can sit down this back end echelons. You, you're, like you're bad. You're bad. Like they, these three, like Killer's an okay unit to run though. But like these two are just bad. Like you just can't find a place on a team for them, uh, and it kind of makes them bad. I think Robin probably deserves to be higher than these units. I think Robin's probably better. And honestly, this guy's probably that 50th spot. Like I said earlier. Uh, as for Luffy Yamato, Luffy Yamato, in my opinion, are around here. Luffy Yamato's burst is ridiculously hard to get, uh, and that's what lets them down. But their passive is exceptional. It's like Free Spirit Strikers and then the team. So, like, you can run basically anything under them, and it's going to work really, really well. Where Roger, he's like Slasher and Psy, um, but his burst just carries him. You don't really need the burst ability of Luffy Yamato to be good. Um, obviously, like, burst abilities make these leaders... The number one, two, three, four units. But Luffy Yamato are the exception to that rule because their passive is so good. Um, I, I still love using this unit. They're still fantastic in PvP. Um, they're still ex exceptional in Grand Party. And Grand Party is pretty much the one place they shine because then you can run them on like a striker team. You can run them on a rainbow team. You can run them on a second free spirit team if you're using Gear 5. Um, Luffy Yamato, they're very, very good. Unfortunately, just like everywhere else, they suffer because of Gear 5. Odin and Toki. Odin and Toki are pretty good. Um, shout out to my boy Itachi. Always loves using Odin and Toki when it comes to Grand Party. Don't ask me why. Strength. Quick and Slashes, I believe, is what they boost. And nowadays, like you can do some really, really fun stuff. Um, the problem with them is, again, you have to shoehorn them into a team. Uh, which makes them a little bit hard to use. Um, but I, I do think they're pretty good. Probably not as... Yeah, probably around the KDAD area, in my opinion. Uh, just KDADS, in my opinion, is probably a bit better because KDADS easy to put on a slasher team. As for Sanji, Sanji's exceptional. I, I really, really like using Sanji. Sanji's burst is really, really good. I think he gives cooldowns, I believe, with his burst, and he um, he does a bit of damage. He boosts fighter, dex, and free spirit, I believe. Um, it's like that fighter slash free spirit thing. So, running teams under him is not terrible. It's just trying to find that third team. That is the big problem whenever I run Sanji. It's it's not that the unit's bad. Um, and he's easy to put on a free spirit team. But um, he's his third team really lets him down. Like really, really lets him down. Zoro, though. Zoro's fantastic. I really like using Zoro. And Zoro, I, I do think, is probably fifth place. So fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Yeah, we got one more swap. Um, just behind Roger. Because he does so much damage. He can just bink a unit and just obliterate them. He does so much goddamn damage. Plus, he boosts, um... He does quick free spirit and slashes, I believe, which is very, very easy to build out teams with. Um, and obviously, he's a staple on that free spirit team, so if you're going to be using him, he does. He just does really, really good stuff. A very, very good leader. Be very careful if you have to go up against him, because that, like, burst ability that he has, it can just blast away one of your teams, like, ridiculously. Um, Shanks and Buggy are very, very good. They have the ability to remove hard stats. They were brought in to sort of stop Roger, but then didn't. Um, unfortunately for, for them, like, Roger, even with that bad rule set, like, it didn't matter. Roger just worked. Plus, Roger was just easy to put on teams. Shanks Buggy, they do go on a slasher team, which is great, but, like, there's just better options for slasher teams nowadays. Um, they, like I said, they remove hard stats, which is awesome, but they're just sort of not that sort of higher tier. I think they do, yeah, like, straight up just decks... Dex, Psy, and Slashes. So, they got really good classes. And you definitely can use them if you're looking for, like, a regular Sugo. That, for me, they probably sit at that, like, 11th kind of spot. As for Robin and Koala, Robin and Koala are very, very good. Um, they've found their way onto the Free Spirit team, which makes them way more viable. But they're a staple on Cerebral. Um, Cerebrals aren't exactly there yet. Uh, but with Free Spirit running around, Robin and Koala are exceptional. I'm going to put them at 21 right now, but they, they, they could move up. Um, they boost... 
decks int and cerebral characters but again int's really hard to use but at the end of the day you pretty much just run a free spirit team with them like as your other one just because free spirit's that freaking good and then you can use like sanji who's getting buffed um you could run slashes with s hawk and do some fun stuff there but yeah uh black maria ulti look they're bad um i'm gonna put them like way back here Black Marine Ulti's massive, massive issue. I think you can probably go up here. Massive issue is that they are like a cerebral booster in PvP, but then Grand Party, they boost Driven. It's completely backwards. I don't understand it at all. So like, they're just, they're whatever. As for Kid Law, Kid Law will probably sit in this like 11 to 20 range. Um, Kid Law is another unit that you really have to bring onto a team and they work great on Driven or they work great on Free Spirit, but they're designed to sort of nerf powerhouse and driven teams and if you're not versing powerhouse driven teams you don't really want to bring kid law and obviously at the back end of grand party when you can't see anything you don't really know what you're going up against and uh kid law can definitely be a product of that being a very bad thing however they are a very good pvp unit when you are putting them in the right situation if you know what you're going up against you are going to be able to do some really really good things and at the end of the day if you can get like 12 wins like you're doing really well in on grand party but um they're okay like they're they're an okay unit uh, I want to say they do the two colors, and then they do, like, maybe Free Spirit Driven, slash, like, Free Spirit Slash Driven. Um, I think I've used them, like, one time, but um, I'm just not a huge fan of them. Big Mom, though. Big Mom's really good. Oh, okay, we're going to have some struggles here with the top 10. Um, Big Mom's really, really good. She can also halve stats, but she does damage. In my opinion, she's just kind of just like a better Roger, but um, doesn't have, like, better teams. Um, her burst is exceptional. I think she's probably fifth or sixth. Her burst is like a better version of Roger's, but her passive is nowhere near as good as Roger's. Roger boosts Slasher and uh, Free Spirit. The downside to Roger is you have to bring him on a team, but he's still a very good PvP unit. Big Mom is an exceptional dex option. Like, she, she's a must bring on the dex team. And the dex team is very powerhouse centric, which is what she actually buffs. I think she does another, like another, um, another typing as well. But... Stuff like Pell, Dalton, Big Mom, Blackbeard, all of these units are all powerhouse characters. So having her on the team is not an issue. It's just about building out the other teams that you need to bring. Like Int is very powerhouse centric, but like Int is kind of like trash nowadays. Um, so you don't really want to be bringing that. But as for what else she boosts, um, what else does she boost? Ah, uh, yeah, so it's just Driven Powerhouse, which is what really what lets her down. Like, But again, the passive isn't really what you want to be looking at. It, it's the burst. And that ability to just use a special after your team's used five Rumble specials um, to target enemies for three times damage twice. And then for the first 30 seconds of it, she can just give half stats. That's kind of her downside. She has to use it in the first 30 seconds to get the half stats. Um, but yeah, she's she's very, very good. Very, very good. As for Kaido, I don't think Kaido's good at all. Um... Kaido has found a way to onto my strength team, um, but like that's his best capability. Uh, I think he does int as well, or maybe that's a this Kaido that does int. Maybe they both do int. It's like int powerhouse and strength. Um, definitely not bad, but just really not good. <laughs> like it's just really, really not good. Uh, next we've got Uta. Uta, I loved using Uta. Um, Uta sort of fits the same build as what Ace was doing, as you have to bring a shooter team, uh, which kind of sucks. But then, like, she does, like, Psy and Free Spirit, I believe. Um, not a huge problem if you have all the pieces to the shooter team. But having to bring a shooter team, unfortunately, can hold you back quite a lot. She does Psy and Int and then Shooters. So she not, you're not getting a lot of good crossover across other, other builds. Um, so that, that's kind of a problem. But at the end of the day, like, she her burst ability is what actually carries her. Because you can actually use her burst ability three times. Just like the Legend Uta, which is exceptional. Uh, the more... Oh, no, you can use it three times. Apologies. Uh, but you get it very easy because you just... After 40 seconds, you can use it. Um, she has healing. She has CD reduction. She's very, very good. I had a lot of fun using this particular character. Moving down now, we've got Fuji Kizaru. Fuji Kizaru... Oh, look. They're good, again, on a shooter team. But that's pretty much all they're good for. And then Fuji Kazara don't really have other teams that work exceptionally well with them. I actually don't think I've used this character. This is, a, this is a character that I haven't actually used. They do boost slashes, but then they boost int, so they don't do Psy, which kind of sucks. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're one that I haven't used because I haven't actually leveled them up. You can use their, their, their burst four times. Holy crap. Targets two enemies with high CT for 80% delay and then deals 5,000 damage 
to too high and yeah like that's not bad actually like i think that's probably better than the Utes. that's probably around here i'll give them a go i'll i'll, I'll rock them next time driven's getting buffed they're 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 they're, they're a driven character well they bought oh sorry they buffed int and now uh, driven's getting buffed so like int and driven kind of work hand in hand um awesome all right i'll, I'll give them a, i'll give them a run next we got shanks um shanks is very very good all right one of these units is gonna have to fall i think shanks is probably here and ace can go here yeah I think Shanks is going to be my last top 10 unit. Again, this is subject to change. So if you guys are watching this now and you're like, stump your clown, clown me all you like. Um, Shanks is really good. Shanks boosts Cerebral. Oh, does he? No, he has, I know he does Psy, um, which is great because he's like a must bring on the Psy team. Uh, I, I want to say he does Cerebral as well, but his burst is very, very good. And that's the reason why I think I have him in the top 10. Um, in regular Rumble, exceptional unit. Like, he's, like I said, he's a must bring on the, the Psy team. Uh, sorry, he does weird shit. He does quick int, and then he has Psy. So you can bring, like, a quick team, and then you can bring, like, a Psy team, and then you can, like, run multitudes of different, like, characters, which is kind of nice, because, like, that passive has a lot of crossover. Uh, but then he's special. Will target enemy target target teammates with HP 50% or below for healing, which is great, because if you get hit by, like, a gear 5 burst, you can just heal back up. And then he applies a shield, which is exceptionally strong. That's what U this Uta does, too. This Uta does a shield, which is so powerful. Um, the shield ability is one of the most underrated things in the entire game. Um, he then also does a shot in the last uh, 40 seconds that will ignore defense, which does three times his damage. So he, he can do a lot of damage. Honestly, he's probably better than Sanji. Yeah, he's way better than Sanji. Um... Again, it's just finding like what teams work best for him, depending on your account as well. But your side team is just basically untouchable with with Shanks on it. Like it's it's ridiculous how good this guy is when you use it when you use his burst. Um, moving now, now we have Luffy. Luffy is a phenomenal PvP character, but he is just so bad in terms of a leader. Like you're gonna want to use him over Kaido. Uh, what do we got here? Two, four, six, eight. He could definitely go in this sort of echelons just because, just because like his teams are so so good. Um, but his burst is bad. Like, his burst just doesn't work all that well. Um, I think I would rather use him over this Luffy, so I do want to put him up here in the, in the top 20. Um, I don't think I want to use him over these characters too, though. But he buffs, um, Strength, Fighter, and Powerhouse, I believe. Or maybe he does Psy as well. Um, he's one of those weird ones as well. But, um, like I said, in Rumble, like, he's just, he's so freaking good. Um, just being able to, like, kill six units pretty much off-rip all the time is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but the problem with him boosting fighter and powerhouse is just a massive issue. He gives strength a buff and his burst isn't exactly all that great. Um, but look, if you look at some of these other units down here, like he's definitely way better than, than a lot of these characters. Um, definitely a product of just being a fantastic PvP character and not overly great in Grand Party. Kobe, Kobe's another unit that it's, he's not that good as a leader. Um, I think he boosts strength in cerebral characters, which again, like doesn't have a lot of synergy, doesn't have a lot of crossover. I think he does fighters as well, which... Does have some crossover with strength and whatnot, but like trying to build teams with this guy can be a massive problem. So we've got 11, 12, 13. We can do one more slot. Okay, that's good to know. All right, next we've got Momo. Uh, Momo and Hiyori, I actually haven't used. So I do apologize if this is coming across as just a little bit biased. Um, but Momo is a slasher free spirit quick booster, so I feel like he definitely could be very very powerful i'm gonna stick him up here in 21 to 30 for now um he's probably better than kobe i imagine he's better than he's way better than kaido he already though is definitely not as good in in regular rumble um but again she does i think she does int as well actually so we'll put her down here again uh apologies if you guys think these characters are better please let me know in the comment section below next we got roger and odin though roger and odin are going to take my third spot um roger and odin are literally just a better version of this zoro uh, they do a butt ton of damage that goes through defense. They boost quick slashes and striker characters. So you can build some fantastic teams underneath them. Um, the free spirit team, the slasher team are both exceptional. And obviously you can run um, strength under them too with the amount of strikers that float around there. Very, very, very good unit. And be very, very careful if you have to go up against them. Honestly, I, I think I'm going to even... I'll give them number two. I think they're number two. Definitely number two. As for Yamato, Yamato is going to take a top 10 spot. I think this Yamato is exceptional. Um, I just think that, unfortunately, um, I think I've highly overrated you. I think. 21, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22. All right, cool. We're still good. Um, I think I've highly overrated you. You're still good because you do slashes, but um, Yamato is exceptional because, again, she's a slasher booster. 
uh, her burst is really, really powerful. Um, the counter mechanic, and then if you're using her on a slasher team, uh, having the ability to sort of take shots, uh, and then you have another free spirit team that does the same thing just passively with Zoro, is fantastic. Um, I thought this unit was so good when I used her. Um, problem is, is you have to shoehorn her into a team. Um, and that's what lets her down so drastically. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't use her on teams. It just means that like, there's usually just better options, unfortunately. So it is what it is. Next, we've got Zoro and Sanji. Zoro and Sanji are like a staple on my slasher team. And I do remember using them in Grand Party, but I wasn't like overly impressed. Um, but the unit's just so powerful in general that they definitely have to sort of come somewhere within this sort of ech echelons, you know? Um, they boost strength and dex, which are two of the best teams in the game. They also just do like a straight team buff. So you can just sort of buff everything. Um, and then they, no sorry, then they nerf strength and dex. So unless you're versing strength and dex, this unit isn't exactly going to be like the be all or end all. They do, um, some good damage. They do some good buffs if you have five more teammates. Um, but just as a leader per se, they just weren't exactly one that I was super impressed with. Um... Honestly, I feel like they probably sit around here, to be honest. Which is a bit of a shame, because, like, the, the unit's so good in PvP, don't get me wrong. But the, the the nerfing that they do is great, but you just have to know what you're going up against. And if you don't know what you're going up against, it makes it very, very challenging for a unit to rank super highly in these sort of back-end uh, fights when you when you literally can't see what you're going up against. Um, next, we've got Law. Law's a Dex Cerebral booster. He's okay. He's just nothing too flash. Um, I do want to use Law once we come to this season, because, um, decks aren't getting debuffed and Cerebral's getting nice buffs, so they do work quite well. Um, but again, he's a unit that I haven't actually had too much playtime with. Um, let's kind of go through some of these back-ended units here. Yamato's definitely in this back-end here. Both these Yamato's, they don't do too much. You need to use, like, healing to get their burst, which makes them really, really bad. Um, Verse Kaido... He's probably one of the better ones for Driven and Int. However, like, he's fallen off the goddamn grid because, like, no one's running Int teams. It's just, it's a bit of a shame, but no one is using Int teams at all. Um, I just noticed, too, I don't have Verse, Blackbeard, and Whitebeard, so I'll make sure to come back to them. Um, Odin, Odin's not great. He's a good unit in PvP, so you could actually use him quite nicely. He does boost strength, though, which is kind of cool, and he does slashes, so he could definitely see some higher... Higher stuff here. I think this Kaido needs to come down. As for Luffy and Ace, Luffy and Ace, look, they're kind of just bad. Um, just because, like, you're never going to run them on the team. You guys probably didn't even know this unit had a grand party ability. But um, they boost Spider and Slashes and then the team, I think. So it's kind of interesting. Kaido, I know people tried to use Kaido, but, look, he's bad, man. Like, don't don't come at me saying Kaido's good. Um, Kid, Kid could probably take this last spot in the top echelons here now that i'm yeah yeah kid's okay i think he does driven or he might do striker yeah he does striker strength and um yeah look he's probably better than something like kobe just because of the teams that he actually buffs let's bring uta down here somewhere just because cerebral isn't all that anymore um, Verse Yamato, unfortunately, she just doesn't buff anything that's too great. Plus, Verse Yamato, I always find that I'm just bringing him from Verse and Quick, another unit that you kind of have to shoehorn onto a team. Um, I gave these units a go, Bonnie and Lilith, but they're just bad, man. Like, they are so, so bad. Um, let's bring you down here. Uh, Lilith and Bonnie are only really good against, like, when you're versing Sai, which is a huge problem because, like, in Grand Party, like, if you don't know what you're coming up against again, you are going to really, really struggle. Um, Straw Hats V2 are actually not too bad. Um, nowadays, because they boost the three or the tricolors, you actually can do some stuff with them. Um, but their burst is not great. Their passive's usable, but unfortunately. They're, um, they're not exactly going to be the B-Roll or the end or... I actually have, I'm missing a, quite a few units here. I, I don't know what I've done wrong. So give me one second. Okay, so we're back. Um, Ezo, terrible unit. Buff shooters and like... He's just a bad PP character in general. So is what it is. 
Um, Blackbeard, I found actually to be pretty good. Uh, I really liked Blackbeard. I don't think he sits in the top 10. But because Strength is so friggin' powerful, like, Blackbeard kind of has to sit up here. I think Blackbeard's definitely going to be a character you want to use over this Luffy. This Luffy actually probably needs to drop down quite a bit. Um, now I'm looking at what other Strength characters are here. We're going to drop Kobe. We're going to drop you. And I think, honestly, like, you're going to go to bad. You're going to go to bad. Yep. You're going to go to bad, too. We need to, we need to make some space here. I grossly overestimated where the characters are on this tier list. So, as I mentioned, we're going to go through it. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you guys if you guys want to actually check this out. Next, we've got Ace. Ace is actually really, really good. I actually really liked using Ace. Um, he can provide a shield. He's very, very good for strength. He does strikers. Um, you can do some really, really fun stuff with him. Um, if I'm going to be using a slasher leader, I'm not going to be... Oh, yeah, actually, I'm going to be using you over you. Um, you can come down here. Uh, you can come down here. Again, you guys can come down here. And then we're going to go bink. We're going to go bink. And we're going to go... Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Apologies about that. Let's take a look at Burgess now. Burgess, uh, I haven't actually used, but he does boost uh, strength. Again, anything that boosts strength is always going to see nice, nice high play. Uh, but he also has to find a place on the team, which, which is a huge, huge problem. Um, so I think he's probably sort of sitting in his sort of back echelons. Um, Sabo's another character that's probably going to fall off because you have to find a spot for him on the team. Um, you can go behind you. And yeah, you can drop off as well. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, let's bring you down. Nami, Nami, can, Nami can fall down. And, yeah, we'll go from there. Moving on to Crosskill. Crosskill's a character I haven't actually used yet. Uh, but just seeing them on paper, they do look very, very good. I, I'm actually super keen to actually use them in Grand Party. They boost Driven, they boost Slashes, they boost Quick. So that Driven Quick Slash team's going to go crazy. Uh, plus, Slashes are very, very good. And uh, I'm just very interested to see what they can actually do within um, the Grand Party formats. But again, it's not a character that I have used yet, purely because I haven't had a chance to use it, to use the units. Um, the new units of Dofi Sugar and um, More Perona, honestly, I don't think you're going to see that much play. I think the Dofi Sugar is probably better because they nerf free spirit. But this unit here is just like borderline bad, man. Like just real borderline bad. But look, it is what it is. As for Dex, the Dex Verse Beards, um, both of them are bad just because they both boost Powerhouse and stuff like that. Dex Beard's probably a little bit better because he's Driven Centric. Uh, sorry, he's um, Dex Centric. But neither of them kind of find a home on the actual teams. Roger and Whitebeard, though. Roger and Whitebeard, they are so close to being top 10 for me. Um, nowadays, they've kind of dropped off. I think they're probably around here. I, I do want to say they're probably around around here. So that means, again, we're going to have to do some shuffling. We'll do some shuffleosa. Shuffleosa. I feel like you probably need to come down here. And honestly, yeah, you're just bad. And for Archie, you're probably worse. Yeah. Probably worse than that. As for the last two, you guys can pretty much guess where these are going to go. I did want to save them to last, but I, I totally forgot to put them on the tier list in general, which is hilarious to me. We've got the Gear 5 combination. Now, I always like to separate the Gear 5 combinations. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on them because they are the pinnacle of what makes a absolute crazy Grand Party Leader. Now, Gear 5, the ability to just decimate units is the aim of the game. Um, you can run HP cut strats on them, and then they just, you, just, you just use their burst, and they just tear through anything. The rule set does not matter under this guy, and obviously with the community standing together and sort of building out these sort of teams that are either autofill and stuff like that, it just means that you don't have to worry about going up against a Gear 5 burst. Now, Gear 5 basically is just going to like either bring your entire team below 50% HP if it's like incredibly boosted, or it's just literally going to kill the entire team, which is insane. Plus, you can build out Psy, Dex, and... Um, strength teams underneath both of them and then obviously free spirit is so friggin good as well so just be mindful of that um it's exceptional how goddamn powerful these two units are and if you if you do have one of them you do want to prioritize leveling them up i do think six plus is way better obviously lots of people do he does more damage he buffs free spirit 
Um, the unit itself goes on a free spirit team, which is the best team in the game when it comes to Grand Party, where this particular gear 5 goes on a side build. When you see this gear 5, you can pretty much guarantee that you are going to go up against a side team. So just be mindful of that when you are looking at um, the, the back end of the 12 to 15 wins when you can't actually see what you're going up against. But if you see this guy somewhere, it could be side free spirit, it could be free spirit, it could be side, just could be anything really, because the unit is so damn powerful. Um, that you can just chuck the unit on a team and it just goes to the absolute moon. So um, this is the sort of grand party tier list. Hopefully it gives you guys an idea of like where everything sits. Uh, obviously there's a lot of fluff there and stuff that doesn't really matter. These are sort of like the, the echelons of characters that you do want to focus on. The top 10 best units in the game when it comes to grand party. And honestly, if you guys are interested in another video on this stuff, um, I could always put that together. But again, I really want to see what cross skill can do when it comes to the, the, for, the, the, the game format. I'm very interested to see how stuff like this character will go uh, and stuff like Burgess could go because, again, I haven't actually used them since actually pulling them for the Grand Party game mode. But let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Like I said at the start of the video, let me know in the comment section who you guys think is the best Grand Party leader besides the top three that I have here. Do you agree with me on this sort of top 10? Do you disagree with me? Let me know down below. And if you guys want to make your own tier list, I will leave a link for this tier list in the description below. Make sure to have some fun. If you guys do post it anyway, make sure to tag me because I'd love to see what you guys actually put together as well. But most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. Belt the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any content. And with that said, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.